Hey guys, so this is solution to practice problem 11.4 from the Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Alexander and Sadiku. So the problem states calculate the average power absorbed by each of the five elements in the circuit below. So to start, it would be useful to find the currents coming out of the sources. So we can use mesh analysis. I'm going to choose this direction. So this is, we'll call this I1 for mesh 1, and this is I2 for mesh 2. So I'm just going to mark the polarities here. So I'm assuming here that the overall current goes down. Um, so we can write, we can write the mesh equation. So let's do KVL for the first one. So KVL, it's 0. I'm going to start over here. So it's going to be minus 40 over square root of 2 angle 0 plus 8i1 plus and we're gonna have the impedance is minus j2 and the current is gonna be i1 minus i2 is of the direction we selected so I can move the constant to the other side And on this side, I can combine like terms, and I get this, 8 minus J2 I1 plus J2 I2. So this is our first equation. Uh, this is for loop 1. Then we have for loop 2, we have KVL again. So I'll start here, I guess. 0 equals, and we're going to have minus j2 and it's going to be again i i2 uh let me make sure we select the right direction it's a minus here yes yeah, so if it's minus j2 it should be like this i2 minus i1 then becomes plus j4 i2 plus 20 over square root of 2 angle 90 so you might be asking why there's a square root of 2 because in the problem the square root of 2 is not there the reason it's there is because I'm using RMS values you have to convert to RMS first so that you can use the rest of the equations so we can move the constant over to the other side we get minus 20 over rad 2 angle 90 equals so to combine like terms you would get plus j2 i2 and then you would get plus j2 i1 so it would be like this j2 i1 plus j2 i2 so now we can put this in matrix form so uh, we use the, the first equation is here 8 minus j2 j2 on the bottom we're going to get J2, J2, this is I1, this is I2. Constant for the first equation was 40 over rad 2 at an angle of 0. And the constant for the second equation was minus 20 over rad 2 angle 90. Like this. So you can use Kramer's rule and you will find that I1 is going to be 3.5355 at an angle of 53.13 degrees and you'll find I2 to be 9.618 at an angle of minus 162.897 degrees. So now we have our currents so for, now that we have the current we can find your parent power s coming from this source and coming from this source and from there we can figure out pretty much everything else so let's start with uh, v1 so source v1 so the current is coming out of the source which is great so the, the source is indeed acting as a source it is it is the current is coming out of the plus so it's acting as a source so we can say s complex is going to be v1 times i1 conjugate 
And so just to review, we see that V1 is 4 over rad 2 angle 0. I1 is here, but we have to put a minus for the angle. Minus 53.13, because it's conjugate. And ultimately we get that S, I'll call this S1, so we don't get confused with the next part. S1 is going to be 60 minus J80 volt ampere. This should be an 8. So, um, because the current is coming out of the source and the source is acting as it should, as a source, the real power is plus 60. So that means that source... V1 is um, supplying 60 watts. Well, where does that 60 watts go? It can only go into the resistor where the real power will be dissipated. It doesn't go in here and here because the capacitor and the inductor do not dissipate real power. At the same time, you have a minus 80 for the imaginary part. So, uh, so source v1 absorbs the minus means absorbs the plus means it's supplying minus means it absorbs 80 volt ampere reactive bars so we'll find out where that comes from so that's for source v1 so now let's do source v2 well if we take a look at source v2 the current is going into the voltage source. So in a way, it's as if the voltage source is the load and the current is charging the load. So we have to keep that in mind. So let's find S2, which is going to be V2 times I2 conjugate. V2 is simply 20 over rad 2, angle 90. And I2 is right here, 9.618 at an angle of plus 162.897 degrees. So, and the reason it's plus is because you're taking conjugate. So, when we work it out, we get minus 40 minus J130 volt amperes. So, because this source is, the current is going into the plus then it's in a way acting as a load it's being it's it's be, the current is going into it so if it's a minus right that means that we're actually supplying this is coming out of the source the minus indicates that the current isn't really going in the current is really coming out but because we marked it this way we're going to get an overall minus sign so we just have to keep that in mind the current is going in so the minus all that means is that it's supplying the 40 so source V2 is supplying 40 watts as a load. If, if something is acting as a load and the current is going into the plus, if the power is positive, that means that it's dissipating. It's, 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 I'm sorry, it's absorbing. It's absorbing that, like a resistor, right? It absorbs that power. And if it's a minus, that means it's giving the power to the other elements in the circuit. So that's why this is a minus, and that's why it means, in this case, it means supplying. Same thing for the reactive power. It's a minus. So that means it's supplying 130 volt ampere reactive. So the question asks, what is the average power absorbed by each of the five elements well it's ambiguous so average real power right that would be all going here right so from the previous voltage source it's supplying 60 watts so 60 watts goes to the resistor from this source now from the second source we get 40 watts and we know it all has to go here because the capacitor and the inductor do not absorb real power so the 8 ohm resistor the 8 ohm resistor is absorbing or absorbs 
60 watts plus 40 watts so a total of 100 watts from both sources so let's say we wanted to discuss what about the reactive power it might be useful to discuss that so we know that the inductor absorbs reactive power and the capacitor supplies reactive power so let's see how much reactive power is associated with those elements so let's say for the inductor QL is simply gonna be well we have the inductor here the current that flows through it is I2 so we want the magnitude of I2 I2 squared times the reactants so that's gonna be 9.618 that's the magnitude of I2 squared the reactance is just 4, it's given to us, so we multiply by 4, and we're going to get something like 370 volt ampere reactive. So we know because it's an inductor that the inductor absorbs 370 vars. Capacitor. QC is going to be what? Well, the capacitor is right in the middle. The current, overall current we chose is going down. So it's going to, the current going in is going to be I1 minus I2, and we take the magnitude of that. So we have to remember there's an overall minus sign. So we take the magnitude of I1 minus I2 squared times the reactance of the capacitor. So the overall minus sign comes from the fact that we have the minus, minus 2, and we know that the capacitor supplies reactive power. So the absolute value, so we have a minus, absolute, um, absolute value is going to be, we have our our currents 3.5355 angle 53.130 minus 9.618 angle minus 162.817 squared times the reactance which is just 2 so in short we get that QC is minus 320.045 volt ampere reactive so notice also that we, def we define these concepts about the inductor absorbing reactive power with the notation that the current needs to go into the plus, right? The current is going into the plus. If the current goes into the plus and your, your reactive power is positive, then it means that your inductor is absorbing power. Similarly, if the current is going into the capacitor and your reactive power is minus, that means it's supplying it. So it's consistent with what we discussed. So the capacitor supplies, uh, I, sh I added too many decimals here, these should not be here, it's 320 VAR, supplies 320 VAR. So, we have capacitor is supplying 320, your inductor is absorbing 370, the Voltage source 2 is supplying 130. So voltage source V2 and the capacitor are supplying. So V2 and capacitor supply a total of 130 plus 320. So 450 VARs. Of that 450 VARs, 370 are absorbed by the inductor. So 450 minus 370 absorbed by the inductor. And we're going to get exactly 80 VARs. So these 80 VARs go where? Well, we saw that in voltage source V1, V1 absorbs 80 VARs. So those remaining 80 VARs, uh, those remaining 80 VARs are absorbed by V1. So everything works out in the end. So final answer. 8 ohm resistor gets or absorbs 100 watts of real power. The capacitor and the inductor get no real power. The inductor will absorb 
370 VARs. The capacitor will supply 320 VARs and the V2 supplies 130 VARs and when we do all the math we see that the remaining 80 VARs goes to voltage source V1.